I grew up with a dream to play in the NRL. By the age of 12, I looked like this. <laughs> I was the loudest, roughest, toughest kid in my family. I played alongside the likes of Sean Kepi from Manly, Reeb Marnie from the Bulldogs, and Dylan Brown from the Eels. I was mad about footy until I looked like this. At 21, after 14 surgeries, three ACL reconstructions, my dream, as I knew it, was over. But this is where it took off. Like Steve, I too have a body that hasn't always cooperated. Not that we're competitive, but four shoulder reconstructions, a major leg surgery, a back stress fracture, you name it, and I've probably broken it. I grew up in the small country town of Barrel with my sights set on cricket. I made my debut for the New South Wales Breakers at 16, and at 17, I made my debut for the Australian women's cricket team. Cricket was all I ever wanted to do. My dad played professionally for England, and my brother also played. So, through countless battles in the backyard to the green and gold, cricket was all I had my mind on. Unfortunately, through injury, my career has never gone to plan. I needed something to take my mind off cricket, and that's when I met Steve and found WaterAbility. While I was at the Parramatta Eels in the national youth competition, the NRL had this amazing rule. You have to earn or learn to be able to play. So I got a job as a teacher's aide at a school for kids with autism. Along with six other players, some of the parents said, hey, can you work on a weekend? And I was like, absolutely. So I took the kids out on my jet ski, took them to the park, Luna Park, and was just having fun. And the parents were like, wow, young athletic males working with kids with disability. So then I thought, well, why don't I start a disability support service that uses athletes as support workers? And this is where WaterAbility was born. WaterAbility is a disability support service that specialises in community access and camps. We look after people living with a disability from as young as four all the way up to 65, and we take them out to do everything that you or I get to do. Luna Park, the beach, the footy, netball, dream world, sea world, and anything else you or I get to do. It was at this moment that I knew that putting happiness first for people living with a disability was going to make the world a better place. We'd both noticed there aren't enough people with disabilities out in the community. Why? Why can't everyone be included? Inclusion, it's a big word and it can be scary, but we're here to make it simple. Someone very wise once said, diversity is being invited to the game, inclusion is being asked to play. We've both come from sporting injuries, but we're united off the field when it comes to building a better world. And that world is inclusive, where everybody matters and everybody has the right to play. Diversity is about representation, and inclusion is about involvement. Those are two very different things, and it's important to help people understand that. When people hear the word disability, it's often a visual representation. You might see someone in a wheelchair, or a blind person with a cane, or someone speaking sign language. But what you often don't see is an intellectual disability. So for me, it's really about what their disability is, it's about what they can do. It's always been so simple. Happiness comes first, no matter what your ability. After my first ACL reconstruction at 16, the doctors said I should retire and not continue. My coach said to me, it's their job to be conservative, our job to conquer the world. Ours is a far better project. <clears throat> and that's something I try not to let the barriers of the disability sector affect what we do. People living with a disability are always told what they can and can't do. Why can't someone living with a disability go on a jet ski? Why can't someone in a wheelchair go to the zoo? Why can't someone with Angelman's go to the football? Why athletes? Two reasons. For me, athletes are the most influential people in the world. And if they can be hanging out with people living with a disability, it's going to change the perception of disability and as a support worker. And secondly, athletes are young, fit, energetic and fun and just know how to be the best support workers. Some of you may be wondering, what is a support worker? And before I met Steve, I didn't know either. Now, shameless plug, 10 out of 10 of our Sydney crew did say it was the best job in the world. In a nutshell, a disability support worker is someone who supports their participants' well-being in their daily lives. It's also someone that takes them out in the community and helps them achieve their goals. 
I support a lot of teenagers who are autistic. We go out on bookings where we might go to the park, to the beach, to the pool, even cooking lessons. No two days out are the same. But before I found what ability, I didn't know what Angelman's or cerebral palsy was. And it's okay if you don't know. Disability has this ugly stigma around it, and it puts barriers in people with disabilities reaching their goals. It is this stigma that people with disabilities can't do the things that we do. That is what we're trying to break down. We're trying to be the loudest voice in this space, so, as a society, we're not afraid to talk about it. You might not know this, but one in six Aussies has a disability. That's nearly 4.4 million people. All right, who in here watches sports? Does anyone know who these guys up here? Tom Trevojevic? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Angus Bell or Matty Proud? Or Lauren Cheadle? Did you know that they're also support workers for WhatAbility? Part of breaking down the stigma means putting it in a positive light. If Tom Trevojevic, current Manly Seagulls, New South Wales Blues and Kangaroos player, can hang out with kids with disability, can you? If Matty Proud, current New South Wales Swifts and Aussie Diamond player can, can you? If Angus Bell, current Waratah and Wallaby can, can you? Lauren Cheadle, current Sydney Sixer and Aussie Rep player can, can you? I want to see people living with a disability get the exact same opportunities as everyone in this room. Together, we're leading the charge to build a world where everyone can play. That is how sport is going to change the world. And now it's your turn. Here are three things I'm hoping to plant in your memory, embracing all abilities. How much better our lives and community would be. One, walk with an open mind and challenge the assumptions you may have. Next time you're sitting at a cafe or at a restaurant and you hear a kid screaming, don't automatically assume it's a spoiled kid throwing a tantrum. Two, Listen more and talk carefully. It's okay to say the wrong thing. Just don't be a dick about it. A great example is when you first start in the sector, you might refer to someone without an intellectual disability as normal. You quickly learn the correct terminology is neurotypical. It's really that simple. Three, invite everyone to play. Fun can be seen in so many different ways, and there are so many better things in life than winning. I can tell you firsthand, you go 10 pin bowling with our WaterAbility crew, an, ex an experience you will never forget. Our future is one that is inclusive, no matter what your ability. Sparking a change is as simple as asking yourself, how can I invite everyone to play? Thank you.